Alright guys, so today I'm going to show you how to run a one-way ANOVA using the data analysis tool in Excel. Um, I don't know why, but Excel makes things a little a little difficult. Sometimes it, it can be a little tricky on finding on which test to use um, when, you're, when you're doing it. And so, it, so make sure you make some notes of, of how you do it, okay? Now remember, a one-way ANOVA notice that I'm not just giving the second adjective of between or within because I'm going to do both but the first thing when we say one way or two way we're talking about the independent variable so right here we have a one way let's use this data set it's fictional data I made up let's say we ask people in each of these states how happy they are and we recorded their scores and so Texas gave us these and New Mexico and Arizona, notice that they're not all lined up, right? It's different people in each group. This is a between groups design. And how do I know that? Because they're not all the same. And also because, so let me write this out. One way, which means one independent variable. How many levels? Four, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California. So notice that the number of levels in the independent variable is not put in the sentence. But we're going to call this between groups ANOVA and um, between groups means that this person in Texas did not live in New Mexico this person is a different person these are all different people in each group okay and so the question that we're asking is are people in Texas based on this super small sample more happy than New Mexico Arizona and California now I can compare Texas versus New Mexico then Arizona then California but we don't want to do that why because we risk the chance of getting a type 1 error which is like calling a man pregnant right it's a false positive so remember the ANOVA solves that by running one single test if that test is significant then you can run um, individual comparisons which are called post hocs. We'll get into that into the next chapter. If it's not significant, you're done, and you say, based on our data, we did not find any differences in the levels of happiness in these states. Okay, so how do we run it? In Excel, we go over here to data, our data tab, and you should have the tool pack data analysis. If not, you'll have to look for that video on how to get it. I click on it, and this one is not too bad. It's an ANOVA single factor. So what do they mean by factor? independent variable so if you just change the you know factor to independent variable then we say ANOVA single independent variable one independent variable that's the one we're going to use so this one's pretty straightforward I click on OK I'm going to highlight the box that I want I can't include this top one but I am going to include the labels of Texas New Mexico and California and I make sure I I cover my whole data set right all my data points I go back and click on this little arrow and it's grouped by columns because Texas the numbers under it represent those individuals if I would have done if I hit rows right um, then it would be if I if I put Texas on the first line and all its data and then New Mexico on the second line but we're in columns and then um, are labels in the first row yes they are Texas New Mexico Arizona if they weren't I would uncheck that but since they are going to leave it Alpha is our probability level. That's 5%. Remember, that's the standard uh, in most sciences. And where do I want the output? I could put it on the same page, um, and actually, I will do that. So let's click on here. Click on this box. This is the left side of my data that's going to be reported. I click OK, and bam. We are not doing any of If you looked at the back of the chapter on ANOVA, there's so many formulas. Uh, you know, it'd be a nightmare if I made you guys do this by hand. And again, most researchers never do it by hand. They may have in a stats class, but they don't do it anymore like that. It's important to do it by hand for the simple tests so that you see what's going on because everything else becomes a variation of it. Okay, so now we come over here to our summary. And and um, this basically just gives the count, you know, how many numbers, what was the sum, what was the average, what was the variance. But what we're really looking for is this right here. ANOVA. Now, remember I told you between groups and within groups that, that ANOVA is, is a division between the variance or the spread between Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California, divided by the spread within each group. And uh, it gives us an F value. And this F value is 1.1. And this number has to be larger than the critical value here, 3.23. 
in order for it to be significant. And it's not. So what we find, and instead of the way this gives it to you is they tell you what the probability of an error is, and it's 0.37. Is that less than 0.05? Nope. So what we're saying is we are done here. That's it. We, we ran the thing and we said, based on our data, we can determine if there's a difference. There, there's no variance enough. There's no spread. Right now, based on our data, nothing's happening. We're done with the experiment. Obviously, here I would say there's got to be a better way to measure it. You need way more, more individuals, etc. And so that's a one-way between groups. That means each data point is an individual person. Okay, let's look at another one. This is where it gets tricky only with how Excel wants you to input it. Um, okay, so this one comes from the book, and it's actually problem number 11.61. On, on page 321 of our book. And what it is, is they're saying um, a dog's wagging of the tail. So the dependent variable here, these scores, so over here the scores was their level of happiness on a 1 to 100. Over here we're saying these scores represent, I guess, how many times a dog wags its tail when it encounters its owner, when it encounters a cat, when it encounters another dog. Now, notice that it's the same dog. So I'm gonna put this, you have to do this with repeated measures. You have to put in um, the actual, the dog, like give, give each participant a number. So that's dog one, that was dog two, that was dog three, that was dog four, and that was dog five. So one dog, he, you measured him with its owner, and then they measured him with a cat, and then they measured him with another dog. So notice this whole line is one dog. This whole line is a two dog. So what kind of ANOVA is this? Well, what's the independent variable? Is there multiple ones? Well, being in unit four, there shouldn't be. So what we're going to say is this is also a one way, one independent variable. How many levels are there here? One, two, three. So that dog was put into three conditions, so three levels. So one way within groups, ANOVA. Why within? The reason it's within is because the same dog was within this condition, within that condition, and within that one. Okay, now how do we analyze it like we did over here with the data analysis tool? You know, it would be so awesome if Excel made this easy, uh, but they don't. They make it really difficult. So the first step you have to do is add in, uh, you know, whatever subject number. So all you're going to do is put, like, if it's a person, you put person, one, two, three, four, if just count. One, count them down, okay? I guess it, it doesn't really matter the order. So you don't have to have these in a specific order. You just got to label them. Notice here we didn't do it. We didn't say participant one because it wouldn't have made sense. So what we do here is we're going to go to data analysis. Please write this down somewhere you can get it. But what we're going to do is we're going to use ANOVA two-factor without replication. Don't ask me why it falls into this category, but that's where it is without replication. Even though we are replicating, guys, I don't know why, but that's where it belongs. So what we do is we go click the table with the labels. Bam. It has labels, alpha 0 0.05. Let's make that output range right over here. Click on it, and I hit OK. Uh, I'm going to double click in between these lines to make it all spread out. And um, so the first part is the summary table. The second part is ANOVA that we want to read. And you're going to see that there's rows, columns, and error. And there's an F for two of them. The question is, which one do we want? Well, what are our rows? Our rows, which is not significant. Notice 0.41 is not bigger than this. But what are our rows? Our rows are our individual dogs. So that's not the ANOVA we're looking for, okay? It's not, it's not. What we're looking for, is there a difference when these this dog goes between columns? That's what was the real question. So we want to look at the columns, and we see that the F is 271, which is way bigger than the 4.45, which gives a p-value. Notice that's e to the negative 0, 8. So that means you got to take that decimal to the left 8 places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So basically, it's less than, you know, 0.000001 or whatever it is. 
0 0.004. Okay, so the idea is that it is significant. And if you looked in the back of the book, the back of the book gives you the, the your answers to the odd problems. Okay, and so if I go back to my appendix to find the answer, it's going to be an appendix C, and C has two parts of it. Um, and so for the answers for this one, 11.61, start on C41, and it continues on to C42. And you're going to see basically at the bottom of the table, that F table, it's going to have 271 and 0.42. So for some reason, this is how they gave it to us. That's the data analysis. Again, we have to use two-factor without replication. I don't know why. It took me some find a, time to find out, but that's it. All you got to be able to read is your columns because our data was in columns. This is each dog went through each column. And so that you would read that F table and we would say significant. So what does it mean, guys? It means that there is a difference in this data that dogs, you know, act differently when they're with their owner, with their cats and with their other dogs in terms of how many times they wag their tail. So where is the difference? Well, we don't know. ANOVA doesn't tell you. It just says there's a difference. It's going to allow you to go on to what are called post hoc tests where you compare each group. But we will look at that in our next um, video lecture and in our next unit. Okay, until later, guys. I hope you learned. If you have questions, please email. Thank you very much.